Good evening. There have been two major developments today in the South China Sea War. The Chinese Navy has obtained an important new weapon, and the U.S. has launched a major attack. We'll begin with the attack. The U.S. Navy fired cruise missiles at a secret landing strip being used by the Chinese military for attacks on U.S. naval forces in the Spratly Islands. Sally Jarvis on the Independence. Take us through it. Jim, the missiles took out not just the airstrip, but also a large number of Chinese aircraft on the ground. Now, there are serious questions tonight about how satellite reconnaissance missed this strip and how the Chinese managed to establish it without anyone's knowledge. Jim, whenever this conflict ends, the guys having to answer the tough questions will be the intelligence people. Sally, good to hear you're safe and those planes won't be a threat anytime soon. One more question. There has been a lot of buzz here about a new U.S. submarine, the Cheyenne. Jim, the Cheyenne has performed with great distinction in this conflict so far. It is state-of-the-art machinery, but it takes extremely rigorous training for a crew to unleash its full potential. And from what I understand, the Cheyenne's crew has just been first-rate. Not all good news from the region, though. Greg Hayes at the Pentagon. What do you have? Jim, the CIA and Naval Intelligence say new Chinese submarine forces have been spotted heading for the South China Sea. Even worse than that, the U.S. Navy has electronic intelligence, ELINT, that suggests a number of Russian-built Akula II-class submarines are being put yeah, in theater on the Chinese side, out of Russian bases on the Sea of Okhotsk. If that's the case, these subs have Russian crews. It's a disturbing possibility, Jim. This is incredible. Once our mortal foe, for a while our friend, is Russia once again our enemy? Sonia Marshall at the Capitol, are we at war with Russia as well? Jim, the administration is treating this very gingerly. The word from Moscow is to deny active participation by the Russians in this war. And until proven otherwise, the president intends to take the Russians at their word, but also intends to be prepared for the worst. Jim? Jeff Thomas, these Akula 2 subs, a real threat? Yes, they certainly are, Jim. A tough enemy. These are very quiet, very fast, very dangerous subs. Dr. Adrian Mann, the Russians send these dangerous submarines into bat for our enemy. Why isn't the president doing anything about it? I think the president is getting some good advice. I suspect the U.S. forces will be told to hunt these Akulas and knock out as many as possible, while in public, the president stays quiet about the Russian involvement. Not challenging them in public gives the Russian leadership a way of making a graceful exit. Jim, this is shrewd advice. Going public now might have the unintended effect of widening this conflict, and the world cannot afford that. Our best bet is to strike these Akulas a lightning blow, and these Russians, if they are Russians, will suddenly vanish. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Play Tom Clancy SSN. This is Mission 9, Reinforcements. Uh, if you watch the Intel video, we have Russian Akulas entering the vicinity. Holy crap, we actually have some pretty good competition at this point. Uh, the Kilos are pretty good, but um, nukes, are, nukes are more deadly just for it's more of like a total war sake kind of thing but yeah well <laughs> the footage in that intel is actually like victor 3's i'm pretty sure it definitely didn't look like a cool is but either way we got to take out some some high tech subs here so we're pretty far from this waypoint here i don't think i'm going to juice it up like i have in times past to make a dumb mistake like that uh the briefing showed i guess i probably should show that map I never really had between the intro video and the mission starting there's like a briefing map you can read but I never planned to like read from that actually but I guess I could show it for a little bit from now on so you can see the map or whatever but Bravo Charlie and Delta waypoints are all expected to have a cool is at them um, I'm going to assume there's probably going to be submarines at this waypoint so I'm a little wary of going too terribly fast but uh I don't know. I'm not picking up anyone so far. I'm seeing a transient up there, but it's probably those oil rigs. So let's actually go down below and see if anyone's down there. I should probably try clearing the baffles too. They might have 
put someone in my baffles. <clears throat> but for now, let's just go beneath this layer and see what's up down here. Hmm. But yeah, today, the weather forecast for today was about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around, oh, I don't know, 15 degrees Celsius or something like that, I want to say. And, uh,. Yeah, it must have gotten colder since I got into class because on the way home it was really cold out. I dressed uh, with a t-shirt and shorts because I walk really fast. But uh, yeah, it was definitely really cold when I was walking home. <laughs> so I was walking really fast just to warm up as quickly as possible. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and clear the baffles, see if we have anyone behind us. It's going to take a while. Oh yeah, see there's a transient off down there to the lower left. Definitely worth checking out. No rush with the coolas around. Don't want to be messing with them at coolas. Hmm. It's all quiet. It's too quiet. Too quiet. I'm not going to do a full sweep of the battles. I'm just going to turn 90 degrees left. So we were about like 45. So I'm going to go to 315. And just listen in for a little bit and see if I pick up anyone. Well, that bottom is actually getting kind of close. All right, level out your rudder or rudder midships rather. <laughs> level out the rudder. Chill here for a little bit. I'm not really expecting anyone to be in my baffles. I don't think. Not seeing anything really. Oh, there's something up there in that direction. That's not the oil rigs. But yeah, I mean, down there on that map, when it shows, like, our direction, it only shows it in, like, 45 degree increments, so it's pretty accurate right now with the direction we're facing. So let's actually go back above the layer here. And see if there's anyone in our baffles above the layer. And if not, I will feel a more confident increasing speed and heading for heading for the waypoint. Neutral ballast, level the planes. Yep, there's another transient off to the right there. It must have been just like something moving on the ground or something, I don't know. That one transient that was up towards like the top right of our sonar bubble. Because Right now, that would have implied a course of like, or a bearing of like three five zero or something like that. I think three four five. Turn on this bearing for a little bit more. I'm not picking up anything. There's probably there might be a submarine lurking around those oil rigs. I'm sure they make a lot of noise. But if I can't hear him, he can't hear me. So, all right. I'm satisfied. I'm going to increase to one-third, actually. Maybe two-thirds. Yeah. Well, let's just uh, let's make turns for 15 knots, I think. That's good. Head for this waypoint. Try and move on. This first one might be... They might just make it kind of boring, because the next ones are going to be crazy with all these Akulas. I don't even want to get these bad boys on stealth here. pretty shallow here. It's hard to like judge it too because there's no like terrain to judge it against so it's kind of hard to tell. It's just like right there but thankfully we have our little thermocline boundary thing on the left that makes it a little easier to discern. New contacts. Stop. A kilo. Holy crap. How the hell did I pick him up? He's far as hell away. There's no way in hell I should be able to pick that kilo up. <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm, so I was having problems with, okay, so the multiplayer match last Saturday, I was bouncing around back and forth between Reinforced Alert, Mod, and Vanilla, Dangerous Waters, and I think from now on I'm just going to make it um, Vanilla, Dangerous Waters to do these multiplayer matches, just because I'm the kind of person that likes, I like stock games, I like what the developers intended and mods always tend to mess stuff up. Like, I don't care, like, I know, like, the Akula is 
bothersome for some of you guys how crappy this stock model is. But I just don't really care. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to be like rude or blunt about it, but I don't care what the Akula looks like. I just want to know how it performs. And that it's consistent. Oh, there was just some weird glitches with like AI instantly knowing where I was when the map started and stuff. Anyway, the point is I was trying to have it so I could have like... Um, so I could have like a folder for stock dangerous waters and then reinforce alert dangerous water so I could switch it back and forth. So I could just like put one in the common folder of Steam if, if I wanted to play as one or the other, but it made my, it made my, something got corrupted with my Steam install or something. It made dangerous waters run like crap. Every time I tried to go into the options and change something, it crashed. So I just had to end up reinstalling Steam. So I'm like playing through the campaign again because my next quick mission for Dangerous Waters is going to be um, Qingdao as a Kilo, so I'm playing through it again, and uh, I was playing as a Sea Wolf on uh, Vladivostok. That mission's a lot more interesting than the Kilo mission. It's just a lot different than the Kilo mission. It involves like going up into Vladivostok Harbor and taking pictures of surface craft. But among other things, there was a Han that passed within 300 yards of my bow. I took pictures of it. Um, I might show those right now. Well, I'll probably wait for the Dangerous Waters to do that, because it's not really game-specific to this, but... Yeah, that was one thing that happened. And then another thing, on, like, the way back, like, there... I was just, like, fl flipping back... Well, okay, so the way back, you go into the harbor, you take the pictures, then you have to leave. That's actually an objective, is to leave the area. So on my way back from leaving, I was just, like, refining up my solutions and practicing them, you know, switching back and forth between truth. And there was a kilo that was, like... I don't know, 6,000 yards off my bow, going three knots. Couldn't hear it at all in sonar. Didn't have the toad out, granted. It's only um, hull and spherical. But I brought that up because this kilo is like 15, like 14 nautical miles away. There's no way, and it stopped. Like, there's no way in hell I should be able to hear this thing. Unless he's pinging me or something. So, and it says he's deeper. Can't really be much deeper. Why would I be picking up beneath the layer unless he is indeed pinging me? If he is pinging me, there's no way in hell I'm going to hear it from here. It's so far away. But I couldn't tell you the last time I picked up a submarine contact that was this far away. Well, let's uh, let's go beneath the layer and see if he's still there. Actually, I don't know if I should be doing that yet. The ground's pretty close still. I'm pretty sure he's past like the waypoint too. I don't even know if we have to kill him technically. Probably do. W. Yeah, it proceeds to the waypoint area. Hmm. Well, it's a good thing I decided not to flank it because I definitely would have ran into this guy and he would have said hello by launching torpedoes at my ass. Alright, is the bottom starting to like give way now? Just about ready to go down there. If, if I can't pick him up beneath the layer, I'm going to speed up a little bit, try to catch up to him. Just for the sake of being quick about it, like, I don't know. In dangerous waters, I just stay at this speed and speed up time, but there's no time speed up, so I have to speed up myself. And then in real life, I would just wait, because it's real life, <laughs> and you don't want to die. So you'll take all the time in the world in real life. Alright, let's, uh, let's go beneath the layer now. Let's fold down the planes. Alright, let's go level out. Neutral ballast. Yep, I lost him. Alright. Increase to two thirds and run for a little bit here. Try and make up some ground with this kilo so I can get close enough and shoot him. Because we gotta get to pretty much half the distance he was at. He was at like 26 or 27,000 yards. We gotta get to like 12,000, 13,000 before we can launch. I, I'm, I don't know what to expect from these Akulas. I mean, a while ago I did, like, you can do um, skirmishes in this game, which I may do at some point when it's over. I don't know. You can battle anyone you want, so <laughs> I was fighting a a Typhoon, a Sea Wolf, and an Akula. But, oh, that mission was effed. I just don't remember what the Akula was like. It was such a small sample size, so. I'm slightly nervous about this. Let's see what this Akula has in store. 
I mean, my cooler is probably and the cooler is probably not quieter than a kilo. A kilo that's like going the same speed, I would think. Unless the cooler has like an up a better propeller or something, I don't know. But the cooler can have a tow array, but that doesn't make a difference in this game. There are no tow arrays in this game, so. Um, the, it's just the fact that the Akula can go, can go faster, a lot faster, for a lot longer, because it's nuclear. Yeah, I mean, I, if you are trying to go for total stealth, the Akula would be the option, because when you're, like, you're just using electric motors, there's no pumps or anything, it's just electricity discharge and your propeller sounds. But you are limited by range and by speed, you just can't go that fast underwater, you can't create that much of a power draw with just batteries. So the nuclear thing being better comes into a total war kind of thing, all about endurance and speed and stuff like that. Like for escorting a carrier group, you're going to need nuclear submarines because carriers to launch aircraft have to be like, that's why America has nuclear carriers so they don't have to worry about fuel. They can just run flight operations all day because they got to be going like 25 knots into the wind for their taking off planes to generate enough lift to like take off and stuff and the same for like the landing ones they have to be going fast enough because if an aircraft carrier was still and there was like no wind like it's too the planes would be ha would have to go too fast to land because in the air like as long as it if the air is blowing it in, a, in one direction and you're flying in the other you add those two speeds together to get to your air speed so if you have a 20 knot headwind and you're going 200 knots it's like you're going 220 knots in the air. So, I mean, so aircraft carriers have to go like 20, 25 knots at least to maintain like flight operations. That's why they're nuclear in America's Navy. That and so you can actually like get like all over the world. Could you imagine fueling an American aircraft carrier? They're huge. All right, let's uh, slow down and pop our head up here. So yeah, to escort that kind of thing, you need a nuclear sub. Like the the stuff involved, you gotta like sprint and drift to get in front of the carrier and like listen for stuff and all this kind of crap. It's just something that's not feasible with a diesel. Diesels are meant more for like littoral, kind of like coastal defense kind of things. <clears throat> Whereas nuclear is meant for like the blue water escorting carrier group and then the pure endurance aspect and the speed aspect too. All right, let's see if we can if we can reacquire the kilo here. I have to try and make sure my torpedo does not hit. Oh, dude, 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 dude. Oh, my God. Again with me forgetting about this ballast crap. All right, well, I'm just going to have to... I shouldn't have to flank it up or anything like that. But I am going to pass above this layer, probably. So if my sonar was chewing on that kilo, I just lost it. So we got to go back down again. I keep forgetting about that ballast stuff, man. I don't know. Just not used to it. If I see the way I do this game, if you haven't, if you couldn't tell at this point, is I just record a mission at once because you can't save it, you can't come back to it. I mean, I did the same thing in Dangerous Waters too. I'd rather just do it all at once, get a better vibe with it. But so I record. I basically all these missions are taking like three episodes, so I record like every week basically, and that's it. Because I upload every other day interspersed with uh, Dead Space. So I'm sure if I was recording every other day, I'd be a little less rusty when I come back to it each week in terms of like forgetting about ballast and crap. But let's get down here and see where this frickin' kilo is at. Because I don't think I can move on until I prosecute him. Yeah, neutral, neutral ballast me up. Actually, yeah. Can go a little bit down, a little further down. <laughs> that is good. All right, where is he? I'm seeing his transient up there, I think. Probably good. I mean, that whole time I was like above that layer. It took a long time to pick this kilo up. Probably gonna take. Pretty long time right now to pick them up. Waypoint Alpha. 
Yeah, search the waypoint further. Alright, we gotta find this key though. 